हेलो माय डियर फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल एंड दिस इज योर फ्रेंड डॉक्टर सुरेश शेणवी इन आवर लास्ट वीडियो वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट वेरियस एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ रोटरी कटिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स इन डेंटिस्ट्री एंड इन दिस वीडियो वील बी लर्निंग वेरियस कटिंग एंड नॉन कटिंग हैंड इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स विच इज मोस्ट कॉमनली यूज इन ऑपरेटिव डेंटिस्ट्री बट बिफोर दैट यू शुड नो दैट ऑल दो द यूज ऑफ हैंड कटिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट मे लुक इन सिग्निफिकेंट वेन यू हैव हाई स्पीड कटिंग इक्विपमेंट्स बट प्लीज नोट दैट देर इज नो जनरेशन ऑफ हीट विच इज गुड फॉर द पल्प वेन यू आर कटिंग द टू स्ट्रक्चर एंड सिंस द हैंड कटिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट instruments only cuts the undermined tooth structure you can actually prevent the unnecessary tooth structure removal which can happen in high speed cutting originally when the hand cutting instruments were manufactured they used carbon steel to manufacture those instruments and that had few advantages like it had good hardness and it used to maintain the sharpness for longer period of time but when people finally started using autoclave to sterilize these instruments the carbon steel started corroding and that's why all the instruments are now manufactured by stainless steel because it has chromium and that provides the corrosion resistance now let's discuss about the parts of the hand instrument the largest part of hand instrument is its handle and the handle is sometimes even called as a shaft the handle may have serrations to improve the grip and most of the time the size of the handle is approximately 6. 4 mm but in order to improve the comfort that is the ergonomics you also get handles which are padded or with a diameter which is more than 9.5 mm and the research has found that a larger handle is comfortable to the operator and even can prevent the carpal tunnel syndrome which can happen if you use a smaller diameter instrument for a longer duration of time Also note the handles are hollow from inside in order to reduce the weight of the instrument the second portion of the hand instrument is its shank and we'll try to learn about the importance of shank when we are learning about the cutting instruments depending on the type of instrument the third portion of hand instrument can either be called as a blade or it can be called as a nib the blades are seen in instruments which cut the two structure for example the enamel hatchet and the nib is made for the instruments which do not have any cutting action for example the burnisher the nib is also called as point now there is one important thing which you should know that you have carvers and carvers although are non tooth cutting but they also have blades but these blades are termed as carving blades and not the cutting blades now let's learn about the instruments which are mainly used for diagnosis and of course who doesn't use the mouth mirror do you know that the mouth mirror is also called as odontoscope and it has many uses in dentistry although most of the procedures are done under a direct vision but if you have to do every case by bending and looking the maxillary teeth directly then you end up having lot of health issues so mouth mirror is very important for indirect vision and it can also help you to retract the soft tissue which can aid in access and visualization there are cases where you have to diagnose the crack and in those situations you can reflect the light from the back of the tooth structure with the help of mouth mirror and this procedure called as transillumination can help you to detect the cracks in the tooth now let's learn the types of the mouth mirror you can get different sizes of mouth mirror but in dentistry most commonly we use number 4 and number 5 size of the mouth mirror and if you are working on posterior teeth we often use number 2 because it is smaller in size and depending on the reflective surfaces which is very important to know the mouth mirror is classified as a regular mouth mirror or a front surface mouth mirror the regular mirrors are more commonly found in our day to day life and that has a reflective layer which is situated on the back side of a transparent glass but the problem with these type of mouth mirrors is when the image falls on the glass it gets reflected from the reflecting layer plus the top transparent glass structure and that's why you end up having double images which decrease the clarity of this and in order to overcome this disadvantage there are mouth mirrors which have reflecting surface faces which are made up generally of rhodium and these reflecting surfaces are coated on the front side of the glass structure 
and that's why they are called as a front surface mirrors and trust me once you start using the front surface mirrors it is only then you realize the amount of clarity this mirror will provide you but it does have its disadvantages one being it is expensive and the second being its susceptibility to get damage if the mouth mirror is not handled properly and how do you know that you have a regular mirror or a front surface mirror that's very simple if you keep an object on the mirror then you will have a distance between the image and the object in a regular mirror which will be absent in the front surface mirror you can also classify the mouth mirrors based on shape they can either be flat or concave and the concave mouth mirrors are the magnifying ones and based on the stem type you can classify it as simple or cone socket cone socket basically are beneficial because in this situation you don't have to replace the handle you can just replace the mouth mirror which reduces the overall cost of the mouth mirror and you also have mouth mirror with suction which can help you to provide isolation and this mouth mirror have a special attachment which is connected to the suction unit of the chair now let's talk about the probes we have straight probe which is most commonly used to find the catch in a pit and fissure and then we also have periodontal probe periodontal probes are most commonly used in measuring the periodontal pocket but in operative they can also used to measure the depth of the cavity and depending on the marking and the tip design these periodontal probes can be classified into various ways for example most commonly we use williams probe and then there is who probe also which which has a round edge with special markings and these are also used for measurement of various indices and then we have the explorers explorers are basically used to feel the tooth surface and the irregularities and also to check the hardness of the exposed dentine which can help us to decide during the caries excavation there are many types of explorers most commonly there is a shepherd's hook there is pig tail type of explorers and there is orbans or number 17 types of explorer then we do have the tweezers and the tweezers can be for placement of cotton rolls or you can have locking tweezers or the cross locking tweezers which are generally useful if you are carrying some instrument like endodontic files or small instruments and you want to prevent the aspiration because the material will get locked in this tweezer and then there is articulating paper tweezer which is used when you are checking the bite we also use cement spatula and and there are many types of cement spatulas which may range from number 24 to number 24a which is more rigid and most of the time these are useful for mixing the luting cement however the number 313 is most of the time used to mix the dical which is a calcium hydroxide material and then there is a plastic filling instruments and these are mostly indicated for plastic restorative materials now what does the plastic materials mean plastic materials means these are the materials which can be molded formed and shaped during the restoration for example those materials were either silicate cement or the acrylic and these were restored by using just the plastic filling instruments they are generally double ended and one side you may have a blade and another side you may have a nib and most commonly we use the number 1 and 2 plastic instrument but apart from that we do have american eagle the bisco type of plastic filling instruments and the ipc type of plastic filling instruments and most of the time these instruments are now used for restoration of composite in the next part of this video we'll be covering the difficult aspect like balancing of the instrument instrument formula and the designs of all the cutting instrument so do subscribe to the channel so that you get the notification and if you have any questions please mention in the comment section and don't forget to click the like button if you found this video helpful